not to be like the world and not to be like the great majority of American Christians, but to be like Jesus Christ. I don't know why you're clapping. I'm talking about you. What's wrong with you people? I'm serious. You can't say amen. You ought to say ouch. Hello, humblebees. Welcome to Tulips and Honey. Hi, welcome back, humblebees. Welcome back to Tulips and Honey. I am your host, Lauren Herford, and today I have a very fun episode for you planned. I am a little bit excited about this because, well, first of all, it's really late at night here while I'm recording, which means this is going to be the goofiest episode ever because this the goofiest time ever for me. Um, also, I'm excited about this because there are some really, really great links that are going to be included in this episode. So if you are um, listening and you want to see a little bit more about any of the stuff that I'm talking about, you guys can find all of the links for all the stuff that we're talking about in the show notes below the descriptions. Um, and so these are things that I would recommend, things that I enjoy, things that I would not recommend, things that are maybe heretical that I want to like slip in there so I can warn people while I'm also talking about cool stuff. So I'm going to give you guys a list of things like the my favorite podcasts, the blogs that I recommend, the books that I love, my favorite Puritans, my favorite theologians, my favorite pastors to listen to, my favorite shows, all of that stuff sort of wound up into this one episode where you guys can have links to all these things and sort of maybe even if you guys, uh, if you haven't heard of these things, maybe this will be a blessing for you. But also, I would really love to hear if you guys have things that I didn't list here on the show. Um, if you have things that you enjoy that you think would be a blessing to, to me and to all the listeners, please feel free to like drop those in the comments. So that way we can encourage one another with, with godly, biblically sound books things like that shows all that good stuff. So I've got several things on my list that I was excited to talk to you guys about today. So hopefully this is going to be an enjoyable episode where you guys can maybe get a little bit of a cool list running. Usually we leave the lists for Friday for the mega list, but this is too much for uh, just one Friday. This is pretty much everything from the last, my last five years, five and a half years of Christianity of being saved and saved in, in uh, July 4th, 2015. And so this is a list of all the things that I have seen that is great and all the things that I've seen that is not so great. Most of this is going to be uh, theologically inclined, but not all of it. There are a few things on the list that are actually just um, personality wise kind of things. So that is what today's episode is going to be about. And I hope you are all going to enjoy it and that you have your pieces of paper out because there's going to be lists in here that you're going to want to include and fun things in here that you might not even want to include at all because they're just going to be goofy little squirrels for you all. That's what I do best. So before we get started, though, I just really quickly want to thank each and every one of you guys. If you're listening, if you're watching on YouTube, if you watch on the mega list, if you go live with us on the mega list, you comment down below. I can't even begin to tell you how encouraging it is for me that you guys listen at all that you are interacting. I'm, I'm receiving really, really wonderful emails and messages and just it, it's, um, it's very humbling to me that that that's something that you guys are enjoying that you're watching and and enjoying it enough to want to let me know or to want to be a part of the mega list and I am blown away by that I'm blown away by the kindness that you guys all show it's it's just a daily blessing to me that that y'all listen and that you're letting me know and, and being so gracious and kind. And, and I know I've said it a million times and I'll say it a million more. I never expected anybody to listen to this podcast. <laughs> I just didn't. I, I really, I, I, I saw the statistics. I saw the, the, um, the amount of podcasters that quit because they get discouraged. I, I saw the the list of what you can expect within your first year or two of podcasting. And, and so um, I was expecting that. And, and this was uh, not what I expected. So I am just tremendously blown away. You guys are just uh, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I have the best listening audience, obviously, <laughs> obviously, even you guys that like the pineapple on your pizza, I, I still love you guys and I still appreciate you listening and I pray for you. I do. I pray for you all the time. 
And I am blown away that you guys even want to listen to me after I repeatedly um, have knocked your favorite foods. So I really appreciate that you keep listening, even if you guys like pineapple pizza. So even a little bit of love for my pineapple pizza friends out there, you guys, you guys are still listening. And that's really, really awesome. I am. Okay, so that being said, I really just wanted to thank you all for listening and for being such an encouragement to me. And for putting up with all of my squirrels, because there's so many of them. Sometimes they're figurative, and then sometimes they're literally, they're running across the window. <laughs> and so so the first thing that I thought would be great to start the list out, because this is Tulips and Honey Hub, and that's a podcast channel. So let's start with some podcasts. Why not? Um, I have a lot of podcasts that I enjoy listening to. There is way too many to list. So I'm going to give you the top five that when they put out a podcast episode, I, I want to watch like I'm, I'm, I'm okay. All of the podcasts that I love, I love. So that's not fair. This is kind of like picking your favorite uh, kind of chocolate. <laughs> Anything that's not covering some kind of bug is going to be delicious chocolate. But I, I have a ton, a ton of podcasts that I enjoy listening to. And thankfully you can put them at like two, three times uh, the speed and you can listen to them faster. And that's how I get through all of the podcasts that I, I go through. Otherwise I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually have time to watch or not watch, but listen to all of these podcasts. So this is just a top five sort of, these are the ones that I'm, I'm, I'm actively seeking out sort of thing. Gosh, that's so hard. Cause there's, there's probably 50 on the list that I, I mean, maybe I should do top 10. Is that too many? You guys don't mind, do you? I might do top 10. Um, okay. <laughs> Cause there's too many. I love, I love podcasts and I didn't, before I started uh, looking into podcasting, I actually didn't know what podcasting was and I didn't know that there was such a thing as podcasting. It just seemed like this was like a little bit of a talk radio kind of thing, but it's so much better because you can flip on your podcast and just go and run and do your own thing. So my top podcasts that I listen to, obviously, you guys know Cave to the Cross Apologetics is at the top of my list. Uh, that's Patrick and Tony, Wonderful Brothers in Christ, literally a book club and a podcast. And that's like the best thing ever because they're going through chapter by chapter and explaining what the author's talking about, where I am so dyslexic. So that is literally a podcast made for people like me. Um, the second one that is at the very top of my list would be Women at the Table. Those two sweet ladies, they have been on my program. I'm going to link to their episode. And of course, Patrick and Tony have been on the program and Patrick's been on the program. He's our resident brother B. And so he's got a special title on his own. I, I need to make him a shirt. So uh, that says resident brother B for tulips and honey because he's, he's, he's on our program a lot. Another one at the tippy top of the list would be the sidebar. So that's Dwayne Atkinson and his wait. So that's Dwayne Atkinson, and he has the the bar. Obviously, he he's the genius behind the Bar Network and the Bar Podcast. Um, and the Bar, of course, stands for uh, Biblical and Reformed. And so that is an excellent show too. It's also on the top of my list. And and of course, it's hard to it's hard to delineate, right? So like, I, I love all these podcasts equally. I'm not giving you like a one, two, three, four, five kind of thing here. I'm just telling you that these are, these are two of the podcasts that are at the tippy top of my list. The sidebar and the bar podcast are unique in that I have learned a tremendous amount about podcasting through both of those. And so when I, when I began having to interview particularly by myself, it was a lot more difficult and really just kind of intimidating to interview people alone. And I, I leaned on what I've learned from, from Dwayne because he's very gracious. Whenever you interview him, he was, he was willing to like answer some questions and, and he, just the way that he has it all set up really, really helped me. And the fact that he is able to get through these interviews in 30 minutes, which is very respectful of the people he's interviewing. So that, that is all things that I've incorporated and learned from. And then of course the sidebar is literally him teaching about these things and, and, um, and he's got some great guests that he's had on that, pro, that, that side podcast as well. The last, um, well, no, not the last one. Cause we're going to go, we're going to go straight through 10. Sorry guys. <laughs> I, I'm sorry that I can't stand and only go with just five. Um, so the fifth one would be a word fitly spoken. That's Michelle Leslie and Amy Spreeman. And they are two absolutely wonderful, sweet sisters in Christ. Both of them tremendous bloggers. I'm going to talk about their blogs when we get to the blog list that we're going to get to in just a little bit, but I love their podcast and they are theologically, I mean, so very, very sound. Everything that they're, they're going to discuss is 
just it's edifying for for us. And so um, another one that would be at the top of my ten list instead of five list would be uh, renewing your mind with. Uh, R.C. Sproul. Obviously, he's gone to be with the Lord, but we still have a massive amount of his teachings that we can glean from. And that is one that I really, really enjoy. If I don't get to every day, I like to get to at least go back through and listen to all, all of the ones if I've missed anything. Uh, and let's see here. That's number six. We've got four more spots that we can fill up. So voice of reason, that's Chris and Rich. And obviously all the time, not all the time, but many, many times in the mega list, Chris is actually in the comment section of our mega list chatting and being hilarious. And it's, it's been a tremendous blessing to me, but it's also really, really um, not intimidating, but it is, it's different when there are podcasters in my comment section, because Patrick from Cage Across Apologetics gets in the comment section all the time. And uh, David Knight from the Exposit the Word podcast is in there sometimes. And Dwayne sometimes get in, gets in there. And whenever I see them, I'm just like, ah, oh, the professionals are here now. I need to behave myself <laughs> because, because their podcasts are wonderful. And I love them. And it's so funny to have them like in the comment section. I'm always just like thinking, um... I'm going to stick my foot in it. I'm, I'm definitely going to do something ridiculous. And here's all these professionals here with him, and I can't edit it because it's live, but I'm not saying that I'm not thankful they're there because I am very, very thankful that they're there. So um, another couple that would definitely make my top 10 list would be wretched radio. Of course. I love that one. And um, one of these days I'm going to figure out a way to get uh Todd Friel to actually come on the show and let me interview him. Um, another one that I, I absolutely adore would be uh, Sheologians. Of course, Sheologians is a fantastic. Actually, I think Sheologians is how I figured out that there was such a thing as podcasts is because somebody shared that or something. I can't remember exactly how that works, but I, I love that so much. And they're very, very funny. And, uh, edu- you know, it's edifying, but funny at the same time. So it's always kind of nice. Um, doing the math here in my head is just not working. Um, uh, so, okay. That leaves me with two more that I can list. Oh, there's so many more that I like to watch. Um, uh, church history matters. I absolutely adore that podcast. I love learning about church history. I love how detailed they get. And, and then, okay, let's see one more, one more, um, guys with Bibles. It's gotta be guys with Bibles. There's so many more that I can list though. So if you're listening to this and you have a podcast and I didn't listen, I didn't list it. doesn't mean that I don't listen because I listen to so many that there's just no way for me to possibly list them in just 10 because there's, there's just, there's too many, but I am going to link to all of those podcasts that I just mentioned down in the comment section below. And you guys can find them and subscribe if you would like to, if they happen to have YouTube channels, I will make sure to include those links. Also, I know that Dwayne has YouTube channels and also Cave to the Cross Apologetics has YouTube channels. I don't know why I'm saying it in the plural, but there's really just one of each. <laughs> and it's late and I'm sorry. We're going to get through this. It's going to be okay. So for the podcast that I don't think you guys should be listening to, and and this is this is not just my opinion here, but these are actual false teachers. There is a podcast for almost every single false teacher. Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer, these guys, Beth Moore, they all have podcasts. And so it's, it's always very frustrating to see that whenever you get the suggestions underneath, whenever you, uh, if you like one, you subscribe to a podcast. If you haven't subscribed to this particular podcast that you're listening to right now, I wish you would do that because it's a big blessing to me whenever you do. And it's very, very encouraging. But anyways, if you haven't done that, go ahead and do that. And once you do, you'll see at the bottom, it will give you recommendations. And it's always like Joel Osteen or Joyce Meyer. And those are false teachers that we don't want to listen to. So don't listen to those guys. Um, but yeah, that's that's the the bad side of, of all of this is that there's there's those kind of podcasts out there and, and you want to um, avoid them. I know that a lot of people really like the true crime. I'm not a true crime kind of person. That's just... I, I don't, um, I don't enjoy that kind of stuff. I do like stories. I like to hear true stories. I don't like to hear true violence stories or true mystery stories. So yeah, that's just me. But if you guys like that, that's totally cool. No big deal. Um, so, okay. Next thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about would be blogs, because like I mentioned, I love blogging and I enjoy having uh, my own blog, but I also absolutely adore getting to read all these other blogs. And so probably uh, recently because of the, um, the the problems we're all having with sleeping and stuff, I haven't been able to get as much reading done as I 
prefer to get done or even close to as much watching and learning and, and listening and things like that that I usually do uh, because our sleep schedules have just been completely thrown for a loop where we're all kinds of off on our on our ability to sleep when we're supposed to be sleeping and then we get tired when we're not supposed to be sleeping and then there's been so many naps and stuff that that the Hereford family we're not used to napping we're not we, we don't do that that's not a normal thing for us we are usually running so fast all day long that we fall out you know whenever it's time for sleep and then usually you know it's 11 11 30 I'll fall asleep and I normally get up about 4 35 this that's just that's not how it's happening now um after we got COVID we we just have had I don't know. I keep thinking maybe we slept so much while we were sick that now our bodies don't feel like we need to sleep as much. So we're waking up and then uh, not being able to go back to sleep for several hours. And then we're getting another hour of sleep and then we'll wake up. And, and it's weird that it's happening to all three of us uh, instead of just usually I'm the one with the weird sleep patterns and I have to talk to my doctor and get things figured out. And, uh, but no, right now it's actually all of us, which is really, really weird. So Anyways, that being said, I used to read about two dozen blogs every morning. So I would get up and I would uh, spend my time in prayer and then I would spend my time in study and scripture. And then I would read through all these blogs. But now because I am getting such a very, very weird and small amount of sleep, I'm, I'm getting up and I'm like, praying and then I'm getting a, a, lot, a little bit of study in and then and then it's usually hopefully I don't fall back asleep but sometimes I do fall back asleep if I um if I don't like continue to get up and go around and move around so, so you guys don't know this is kind of a weird thing uh, my my husband works nights so um, Justin gets home at about 6 30 6 30 if if there's a random baby delivery that's that's late, then he'll get home at seven. But usually he's home about six thirty, and so I get up at four thirty or five so that I can be awake by the time he gets here and not groggy or grumpy. And I get you know the house picked back up if we've made a mess before bed or the animal the dogs make lots of messes just nonstop, nonstop messes. And I get you know something prepared for him to eat and all that good stuff. And this this is because. If you guys watch the live events, then you already know that I, um, I'm like a little school girl with my husband. He's, he's just the cutest and most handsomest. And so I, I hate when he's gone, I can't wait all night for him to get home. So I'm not getting up to be like, oh, you know, here I am just blah, 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 being a good housewife. No, I'm getting it because I cannot wait to get to see him. So that, that all being said, none of that is like, aha, look at me. I'm a super cool housewife. No, 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 no. You don't understand. It's very, very difficult to be married to me. I am not a very good housewife. I am very forgetful. And if you guys have ever seen somebody not get anything done, but run their wheels all day long, I mean, that is me. I'm just like, okay, um, dishes need to be done. Let me start the dishes. Oh, wait, but didn't, wasn't there laundry that I need to do? I better go start that laundry. Oh, you know what? I need to take the trash out. While I'm outside, I should probably check the mail. What was I doing to begin with? I don't know, better start dinner. That's my day. That's my whole day. My poor husband. Without some sort of sticky note or reminder, it's just not going to get done. So I'm not saying any of that to say like, oh, look at me. I get up early with my husband. I get up early because I can't wait to see him because he's so my favorite person. So anyways, that all being said, usually I get to read quite a few, uh, quite a few blogs. I'm, I'm starting to finally feel a little bit better. I don't want to jinx it or anything. I know that's not real. It's okay. Don't send me hate mail. I know there's no such thing as jinxing. I'm, it's just an expression. It's just an expression. Put the keyboard down. Don't email me about being jinxed. I was just joking. Okay. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Let's all read. Let's all remember that your hate mail is going to get read by Clementine, my golden doodle. So don't send it. It's okay. Anyways, hopefully I'm not jinxing it though, that I am starting to feel a little bit better and having more consistent sleep. I was waking up, goodness, I would fall asleep uh, around 10, 10 or 11 and I would wake up at 12 and it would take me about an hour to fall back asleep. And then I would wake back up at two and then it would take me about an hour to fall asleep. And then my alarm would go off at 4.30. So it's, it's been a difficult uh, couple of months with, with my sleeping patterns. And if it was just me, I would just think, well, you know, there's, there's all kinds of issues with my brain, no big deal. But Justin and Kayla are having the exact same issues, which makes me assume that maybe it has something to do with COVID. I don't no idea. I, it's a weird, this is a weird virus. I have no idea if that's just us or if, if it's 
some sort of weird lingering side effect. I have no idea. Sometimes the taste comes and goes too. This is so, it's such a weird thing. Like every now and then I will, every now and then I will lose my sense of smell and my sense of taste again, because uh, the the whole two weeks that I was sick, I, I felt, well, I felt miserable, but I was able to smell and taste all the way up until like the last few days of it. And then all of a sudden I lost all sense of smell. And I could still taste a little bit, but now all of a sudden that'll just go away again and, and I won't be able to smell anything. I won't be able to taste anything. And then it'll come back. It's really, really weird. I'm telling you, what, it is so super bizarre, but anyways, that being said, I am slowly getting a little bit more sleep at night. So, and, and so is Kaylee. So that's, that's really, really good. We're able to get a little bit more sleep means that I'm able to actually focus long enough to read through all these blogs that I'm going to list to you. So if this sounds sort of like an extensive list or anything like that, uh, it's, it's really a routine kind of thing for me that I enjoy. Get, okay. Let me back up. I don't actually read these blogs. Okay. I am, as you all know, if you have been listening long enough, you know already that I am very dyslexic. I don't read these blogs, my phone, my cell phone. It reads to me these blogs. Because if you have an iPhone, there is a special way for you to uh, make your phone read to you. And so that's what I do. I click on, I, I get notified each of these blogs, I get notified. And then so I get notified and then I go and I read these blogs. I have my phone read it to me by, um, I just swipe down with two fingers and, and it starts and it reads it to me. I've got, you know, my headphones in. So I'm usually doing this really, really early in the morning. I usually get, you know, um, done with my praying and my studying with, with still maybe about half an hour left before Justin's going to come home. So while I'm cleaning up or cooking, I, I do this. And so I'm, I'm not actually reading any of these blogs. It's, it's faster the way that I do it. Not everybody can listen uh, to audio, but if you, if you have an iPhone and you don't know how to figure this out, Google it because it is amazing. And ever since I figured this out and I've been able to do this, I have, I have been able to read way more stuff. Even if it's just a Kindle book, if you, if you have a Kindle book, you can still make it read to you. You don't have to do anything fancy. Your, your, your phone will read it to you. So, and the cool thing is that you can pick different accents. And so if you want it to read to you in a fun, like British or Australian accent, they have all those options on your, on your phone. So I, I have mine on Australian. <laughs> so don't tell, um, don't, don't tell Ray Comfort that I have mine on Australian. So if you guys have been watching on the mega list, I've been trying to actually highlight a, a blog each, uh, each week. And it's, one of the things that I, I enjoy doing so much because I, I've been listening and listening, I've been reading, reading these blogs, my phone's been reading it to me uh, for so long that this is just a part of my daily routine. It's, it's almost like something that I can maybe take for granted that other people don't know that there are these wonderful blogs out there because we all know like the main blogs, like the Tim Challies kind of thing. And, and I'm not, that's, there's nothing wrong with those. Those are all wonderful blogs. That's great to watch, to listen to. It's, it's, it's perfect. Um, listen to if you have the phone thingy all, all connected. Uh, but these are the blogs that have come alongside my blog or I have found um, randomly, whatever it is. And this is, this is a, it's almost like, it's like a family. A blo the bloggers are very, very supportive of one another. So the thing that I didn't expect whenever I began blogging was that it's actually really difficult for a random person to comment on my blog. You have to like create a login and all this stuff and it makes it kind of difficult. But so a lot of the, the likes and the comments are coming from other bloggers. And so it, it creates a situation where you are actually talking back and forth to these people almost like daily, nearly on a daily basis. And so it makes it feel more like these are, these are buddies. These are blogging buddies here. Right. So, um, that's why whenever I first began podcasting, I invited all these guys on to my program so that I could put a sound, a voice to their, to their writing so that their readers would be able to hear what they sound like when they're typing. And so I had pastor Jimmy from the Veritas domain, uh, Word, WordPress. So these are all WordPress uh, blogs, 
my, my blog is on the WordPress. And so if you are, um, if you're planning on blogging, if you are thinking about this, about blogging, I would definitely recommend that you go with one of the, one of the websites that have other bloggers to connect with. There's, there's a few of them. There's like blogger and then there's WordPress. I use WordPress. I adore WordPress. I have used blo- uh, blogger like 10 years ago. I can't even remember now. It was a really, really long time ago. I had like a little arts and craft blog. Uh, and, and, um, I find WordPress to be not just easier, but also the the community around it is just, just tremendous. There's a, a, a good sized reformed community and, and, and the blog world of WordPress. So if you're thinking about creating a blog, the reason why I always say, if anybody asks me, uh, it, rather than just making your own blog, like your own website to use WordPress because other bloggers will have an easier time finding you if you are uh, in in the WordPress domain. And so you can still own your own website there. Uh, Another one of the blogs that I read every single day is Michelle Leslie's and her her blog is her own blog. It's her own website, but she's blogging still through WordPress. And so I can still, I get notified through my WordPress app that she has released an article. And so that is, uh, really, really helpful. And I always recommend that so that you don't get discouraged if you're not uh, having a lot of conversations back and forth with people. It's it's great to have your own website. You can pay WordPress for that and, and you'll get your own website or you can keep it for free and, and have the little WordPress at the end like I do. But it is very encouraging to have that community come alongside you and to have those those influences for you while you are blogging. And so, uh, yeah, Veritas Domain, Michelle Leslie, uh, Tom from Ex-Catholic for, um, Ex- Ex-Catholic for Christ, his, his blog, uh, him, Michelle Leslie and, uh, and Pastor Jimmy, they've all been on the program before and their blogs are blogs that I, I read every single day. Elizabeth Prada, uh, her blog in times, the in times, uh, blog is another one. Of course, I'm going to link to all of these in the descriptions down below so you guys can check them all out. Those are uh, four of the ones that I read every single day if they post, which most most of these guys, they do post every single day. Also, Chrissy from Walking by the Faith, by Faith yeah, that's another blog that I absolutely love. Uh, the Reformed Reader, that's another blog that I really, really enjoy uh, frequently giving uh, book reviews. Uh, Reason Cases for Christ, that is a apologetics blog. Oh, uh, more ink, please. The more ink, please blog. And I just love that name too. I just think that is a very, very fun name. So those are some of the blogs that I read every single day. Obviously there are, there are a lot of of blogs that are not on WordPress that I would also enjoy reading that I I have a harder time getting to, to find because I'm already writing on uh, WordPress. So it's easier for me to get to these blogs, but I want to know in the comments below, if there's some blogs that you enjoy, let me know uh, down there below in the comments or up above or wherever it is that you can find comments to write. If you, if you can, you may not be able to because not every podcasting platform can. So a little bit of advice for blogs that you shouldn't read. Anything that has delicious cooking is a bad idea. Don't read it because you will then want to go and eat it, eat whatever that is that they're making. And if you're like me, you're not going to be able to cook it the way that they cook it. It's not going to taste the same. It's not going to look the same. And it's definitely going to make you hungry. So you can read them at your own risk, but there are lots of food blogs out there that are just fantastic and, and they make me hungry. So that's my, my recommendation for the blogs. Be careful what you read because we, we eat with our eyes first. So there you go. (laughs) So continuing with this line of maybe entertaining, mm, edifying and, and, and reformed sort of things for you to enjoy reading and watching, um, shows. So you might notice that in the podcasting list, I did not list fighting for faith, uh, with Chris Rosebro. That is because I always watch him on uh, YouTube because he's hilarious and the faces that he makes and the video editing that he has done is very impressive. And I absolutely uh, adore getting to watch him. So rather than listening to his podcast, I I do always watch him on YouTube. Another show that I love on YouTube. And hopefully this will be one that you guys will, uh, if you, if you haven't heard of this one, hopefully you guys can check this out because when I first started watching this, I was blown away by the, the fact that they're putting this together once a week, this is just tremendous, tremendous help. Answers News. 
Answers News is a show done once a week. They used to do it twice a week. They had to scale it down once a week on Answers in Genesis. So it usually has Ken Ham, Georgia Purdom, and a few other people from time to time will switch out with them. And there's they've got like, you know, A team, B team, C team, just goofy, goofy stuff like that. But what they're doing is fantastic because they are giving you the headlines of things that affect the creation uh, biblical creation. So if there's evolution stuff in the news, if there's things things that are affecting believers in the news, stuff like that, they address it. So a lot of this stuff I don't even see. And they are pulling these these news articles that are happening all over the world. And it's it's helpful for me to be able to to get this information in a show like this because these are these are articles that are important that I'm just going to miss, and so this is really a really great thing if you guys are like me and you love uh, uh, being a card carrying biblical creationist and you enjoy sciency stuff. That is a great a great way to um, get some information. Like uh, obviously, Dr. Georgia Purdom is a a mo- molecular geneticist, so she has a PhD in molecular genetics, and so she's got a tremendous amount of knowledge that she brings to the show, and then. In fact, actually, if I just could quickly list my two favorite uh, scientists would be Dr. Georgia Purdom and Dr. Jason Lyle. And so Dr. Jason Lyle, of course, is an astrophysicist. So I actually got the opportunity to interview him way back before there was a YouTube channel. So maybe I can actually um, include a link to that that old interview there where he even answered a question for Kaylee, which was super, super duper sweet. She asked about uh, wormholes, I think, or black holes, black holes. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, those are my two favorite uh, scientists. So anyways, moving on. That show is fantastic. Another show that I enjoy, it's it's not really a show anymore, but uh, Living Waters puts out stuff throughout the week that's very, very helpful, especially encouraging if you are wanting to to share the gospel more, if you're wanting to be more bold in, in how you share the gospel and when you share the gospel, that is a great, a great YouTube channel to subscribe to so that you can watch their, they used to have a program called the comfort zone. And I, I just, I love that name, the Ray comfort zone. Right. I, I, I love it. And it had his uh, son-in-law, Emil Zwayne on there and they had Mark Spence on there. And so that was a really, really funny show. They don't do that anymore, but before they had the comfort zone, they had on the box. And both of these shows are hilarious. You can still find all the episodes of this and and they're all on YouTube, but they're also on podcast form. So those are really great uh, shows. I don't actually watch television unless my family wants to watch something. I used to like to have just background noise on, but now I've almost always got at least one headphone in. So I'm usually listening to a podcast or I'm watching um, a sermon of some sort. So I don't, I don't ever, ever have the television on. If, if there's nobody else watching it, it's just not going to, it's not going to be put on. So I don't have any sort of like normal television channels or shows to tell you guys about that I like or dislike. Uh, one thing that I would recommend you not watch if you are, uh, looking at television shows is, uh, ancient aliens (laughs) because I watched, uh, gosh, it's been several years ago. I watched a a guy that was explaining all that's wrong in their nonsense that they're talking about. It was so bad. He was just basically saying, look, that everything that they're saying is like sensationalized. It's nonsense. If you look at it logically and he laid out this wonderful logical way of viewing everything like the pyramids and how they were built and stuff. And he, he would, he pulled clips from, from ancient aliens and then he put it next to actual like science and archeological study and stuff like that. And I was like, Oh, that show, that's not right. That's not good. You guys shouldn't be doing that, that bad. That That's dirty. Mm-mm. So that's, that's the only show I could put on the don't watch list. Uh, obviously there are lots of shows that you, you shouldn't watch just because they're so incredibly simple, but I hear that pretty much every show nowadays has sinful um, couples and stuff and things going way too far. So apparently all television, including some of the cartoons and stuff are now just really, really bad. I, I don't know, because uh, before I can watch a show, Justin always watches it and sees if it's bad or not. And then he'll be like, oh, that one's too bad. So we're going to watch that. If he watches through it and notices that there's like a bad word in it, he will hold the remote 
with the subtitles on and he will wait for that one bad word, wherever it is, no matter if it's just a little bad word or a big bad word. And he will mute it for me because he says that I have angels ears. And so my angels ears can't hear naughty words. So that's a, that's something my husband does. It literally makes him nervous. If there are people in stores or surrounding areas with, with anything that has like a naughty word in it. If there are people saying bad words, he'll like, he'll maneuver me out of the way of that. And it's really, really super cute because he just, he says, my ears can't hear that. So anyways, that's just uh, as an aside, I don't, I don't like television. It's just not my thing. You have to sit still to watch TV. Whereas if I have it uh, in a podcast or in my ear, if it's I'm listening to a book or something, I can go all over the house. And like I mentioned earlier, get nothing done while I spin my wheels. So I need to be able to spin my wheels, guys. That's just, I can't sit still for television. Mm -mm. Um, Okay, let's see what else. Books. Okay, let's do books next, you guys. This is, we're just going to continue to give you all the things that you can enjoy reading, watching, listening to, all that good stuff. So as I mentioned already, if I, if I can find a book in Audible, that's great. But if not, because Audible tends to be pretty pricey, I usually find it in Kindle where I can listen to it. However, a lot of my favorite books are so old that they're in the public domain now, which I just think is fantastic. But Before COVID happened, like maybe a month or so before the lockdown and stuff, I found a few really, really cool books at a a, a thrift store. And so one of my favorite books, one of my top favorite books is Pilgrim's Progress. The reason why I love Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan is that it is such an excellent, excellent way of describing what it's like to be a believer from the beginning all the way through to, you know, being a seasoned believer and then, and then apparently death. I know, obviously I don't know that part, but I do know that from the beginning, when I was a new, new believer, I would, I would read this book to Kaylee at night and I was reading it. And a lot of times I would have to like fight back the tears because I'm thinking this is exactly how I feel. This is what it feels like in an allegory. <laughs> so um, I did find this wonderful book. Uh, isn't that beautiful? They really knew how to make books back then. Look how pretty. It's so, it's just so elegant. It's, it's very, very pretty, very detailed. Anyways, if you're listening and not watching, you can't see that, but it's just, it's got some pretty stuff on the front, but this is uh, one of my top favorite, if not um, next to the Bible, one of my favorite books uh, of all times is the Pilgrim's Progress. And, and that is something that I was lucky enough to find for a dollar at the thrift store. I also found um, lectures to my students by Charles Spurgeon at the, at the same thrift store for a dollar two. And so I, I can't take it right now from where it's at because it's actually holding something. Uh, there's, there's stuff on top of it. So I can't, I can't move that one over here, but that that's another one that I found that's just very beautiful the way that the uh, cover is and everything. And I love that nowadays books. Well, not, I guess they're not all like this, but uh, because I'm so super duper cheap, I'm not going to buy a, a hardback cover, hardcover of a book because that's, they're usually really expensive. So I love how beautiful the books are, you know, prior to, I don't know when, but most of my books exist in Kindle. So the top five list, obviously excluding the the Bible, the Bible is going to always be at the very tippy top of all, all things. Uh, the top five books that I absolutely adore would be the Pilgrim's Progress, uh, Thomas Watson's, um, 10 commandments. I recommend that to just, just about Every new believer, if you haven't, if you haven't gotten your head around um, what the Ten Commandments are and why, that book, tremendous, absolutely tremendous. It, Thomas Watson, just I'm getting too excited. I got to calm down. He goes through it while also explaining how these are are explaining God and who He is and His attributes. And, and then in the light of that, our sinfulness. So that's something that's just, it's just beautiful. Absolutely love that book. Um, three, uh, the third book that I would say is, is just an absolute must read would be, um, uh, Susie Spurgeon, Life and Legacy of Susie Spurgeon by, uh, author Ray Rhodes, uh, sorry, Pastor Ray Rhodes. I also got the chance to interview him. He was one of the first people that I reached out to because I just adore his book. I've read it probably at this point, I've probably read through it 10 times. Because it is, it is not just the story of of Susie herself. We, usually, what we get whenever we read about Charles Spurgeon is we get his personal life, how he, you know, was traveling, where he went to, things like that. What you see in Susie Spurgeon, the life and legacy of Susie Spurgeon, is a love story between Susie and Charles. But you also see 
the love and adoration that she had towards God and towards his church, the faith that she had, we get to see them actually discussing her salvation together, the two of them, before they even know one another very, very well. That's actually how they ended up talking back and forth. And he brought her a Pilgrim's Progress as a, as a gift. And you get to see all this stuff. But the, the, the thing that hooked me on this book was the very first, the very beginning of it. It starts with him having died. And, and this is just a little bit big, a, a little forward at the beginning. And then it goes straight through from her childhood. And she is weeping and mourning the loss of her husband sitting her head on the chair that he used to sit at and edit his sermons, touching his things. And I mean to tell you, I bawl my eyes out every single time I read that part. It is just the antithesis of like love that, that she had for him. It's the, you, you can feel it. You can feel it like that loss. You know, that if you, if you have a spouse that you're going to, you're going to maybe one day, unless you're you know, lucky enough to go first, you might experience that. And I know how I feel whenever my husband is just gone for work. And it's, you know, it's hard to, to not be like a big old crybaby because I don't want to discourage him. He's going to work. That's a great thing. But also at the same time, I don't want him to go. So since we were first like newlyweds, um, he used to drop me off at my office downtown Dallas and I would sit out. Um, and, and by the street where he dropped me off at and watch, watch the car and <laughs> disappear <laughs> because I was so sad to have to be leaving him. So, um, anyways, that's a, that's the third book on my list that I absolutely adore. I love that book. I, um, another book that I think is an absolute must read, especially if you are reformed or Calvinistic in your the theology would be the institutes. This is actually four books, but we're going to pretend like it's one, um, Calvin's institutes. It calls itself the primer for the Christian faith. And if you compare the knowledge that is in this book based on what we would consider a primer for today's faith, it is embarrassing. The beginnings of the faith back then are just most, most professing believers would have no idea all the stuff that was considered something that was just the beginning of what you needed to learn. That book absolutely phenomenal. I actually started reading it before I would consider before I had even considered myself reformed because I had heard somebody say that the um that Calvin Calvinists were um following a false gospel and so that they were they were not saved and I was concerned because I had a lot of friends that were um Calvinists and so I was like well you know what I'm going to go straight to the horse's mouth I'm going to read this book and figure out what it is that is in here that's so bad and I I wrote blog reviews of it and each blog review I was like there's nothing in here that is even remotely controversial there's nothing in here that's not biblical. Like he's just going through biblical theology. Each each chapter is just biblical theology. And so I couldn't figure out where the where the like major issues were until you know you get to the fourth book and you realize, okay, the one thing that they must have an issue with is that it, it's very specifically saying that God is sovereign over salvation. And then I get to that point and I'm like, well, wait a minute, do all believers not believe that God is so sovereign over salvation? Because for me personally, I had nothing to do with being born again um, at all. I just was like, God, if you send me to hell, I deserve it. I hope that you die. I ask that you not, if you, if you would be gracious on me, this wicked sinner, I would appreciate it. But if you don't, I understand because I, I am a complete and total wretched sinner that doesn't deserve the forgiveness that you've offered. And God graciously saved me. I didn't have anything to do with that. I didn't have anything to do with my first birth. I don't have anything to do with my second birth. And so I, I got through those four books. It's really, we're going to pretend like it's one. And I couldn't figure out where the uh, controversial stuff was. But I was like, oh, well, look at that. Now I'm a Calvinist. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Uh, the last book that I want to mention that would be at the tippy top of my list of books would be uh, The Gospel According to Jesus by John MacArthur. Uh, that is, besides the, the Susan Spurgeon, the most recent book that I can point to. I, lo I love the uh, Patristic Fathers, the, the, I love the Puritans, all that stuff. 
this this particular book however it has a special spot in my heart because i read it to kaylee at night and i was hoping to read her something theological like this because i thought that maybe it would help her to sort of calm down if she was needing to like think things through and listen that it would help her brain to calm down but what it actually did was make her ask a lot of questions which which turned out to be wonderful because she's now she's listening to these she's listening to me read this book to her and i remember she stopped me at one point and she was like mommy i just want to tell you that a lot of things that i was really confused about with the gospel now make sense and that to me makes this book very very special so that that's the fifth book that i want to mention to you there's a couple of authors that i want to tell you guys about to not read so you guys know the basic ones you know not to read joel osteen you know not to read joyce meyer uh, beth moore all those things but there's a couple that i just wanted to mention really quickly um sarah young i know that her books are very popular they are not good books that that is not biblical sound theology that is something that i would not recommend you buy or read whatsoever i've only had the misfortune of reading through portions and it is it is very unbiblical um and voskamp is another another writer that i would highly recommend you avoid her writings are explicit in nature uh where she is actually describing inappropriate behavior with Jesus, like with with the Holy Spirit that she feels like she is experiencing. And so uh, definitely one to avoid. And another one that I had actually never heard of, but whenever I was talking to um, some sisters in Christ that I'm in a group text with, uh, Sandy, actually from uh, Breath of Life, Pastor Edward's wife, Sandy, and you guys, if you're in the group on Facebook, you know, Sandy, because she's wonderful. And she does a whole lot of really awesome work there on, uh, on that, on that group. She said uh, that Pastor Edward warned her about a Dr. Rebecca Brown. So uh, Pastor Edward wanted to warn folks about her and about her writings. I haven't read her stuff, so I don't know specifically what uh, what it is that she's detailing. Pastor Edward has always been such a tremendous blessing to me, and so I'm, I'm thankful for his warning. And I just wanted to make sure that you guys were also warned by that. If you have heard of those three authors, let me know. If there are other books that you would not like to recommend or other books that you would enjoy recommending, let me know about that as well in the comments or emails or however you want to tell me. I would uh, love to hear what you guys are currently reading and uh, whatever it is that you guys would recommend that I I read. I have currently on my to-do list for reading, I have A Holy Life, The Beauty of Christianity by John Bunyan. Uh, John Bunyan's other works, by the way, tremendous. I recommend everything that he's written. Um, and so I have that on my little to-do list. That's going to be the next book that I read. So I'd love to hear what you guys are reading. Movies. Let's talk about movies. You guys, I don't have the patience to sit for a show. I don't have the patience to sit for movies. I really, really struggle in the movie theater. If it wasn't for all the snacks that I can sit and eat, I would really have a hard time. But at least in a movie theater, you feel sort of like enveloped, you know, when you're just putting a movie on television, I have to have like my phone and something to to fiddle with. Like, I don't know, um, a little art project or my nails to do or something like that. Something that I can do and keep myself entertained while I'm trying to watch a movie because it's a long amount of time to have to sit still. So I you know, it's tough for me. Uh, a movie that I actually do love that I, I watched and was able to sit through with with the things that I need to keep myself from from spinning my wheels and running all over the house. Uh, Polycarp. Polycarp is a fantastic movie. I love, I love Polycarp. I, before watching the movie Polycarp, I had read all of his writings. Polycarp is an uh, what's called a patristic father. That is a early church father, someone to, become, to, to be considered a patristic father, you had to have actually been taught by a disciple before they passed away. And so obviously John lived the longest. There are patristic fathers that were taught by Paul or Peter. And so, yeah, um, Irenaeus, um, Polycarp, let's see here, Clement of Rome. It's so late that I'm struggling to think of the rest of them. But these are all men who were taught directly by the disciples. And so their writing contain it, contains such a tremendous amount of quotes from the New Testament that it's been said that even if we lost the New Testament, we could actually re-put it all together based on just the quotes from these early church fathers. So that is uh, really, really cool. And the movie Polycarp was very well done. I, I really enjoyed it. Obviously, um, 
both of the American Gospels that have come out. The third one's going to be coming out soon. Dwayne Atkinson is going to be in it. I am so excited to see that. One one movie that I would say don't watch, um, not because of anything inappropriate, uh, just because it was so bad. I was really excited about the Tesla movie. You guys had the best topic in the world to talk about. Okay, it's not the best topic in the world. I'm sorry. I'm being a little exaggeratory. Obviously, God is the best topic. The Bible is is always first. Remember, I said that. I said that. <clears throat> Put the keyboards down, okay? I had already said the Bible is the best. You, you, these guys had one of the coolest men to talk about. Nikolai Tesla is one of the most fascinating inventors that we could talk about. And there is very little out there about him. And they had this wonderful subject and I couldn't wait. I was so excited. And the movie is awful. It's so bad. It's, 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 it's not the acting. The acting is, is great, but the flow of it is so broken and choppy that I, I couldn't finish it. I couldn't even finish it. And, and that is hard for me to do, to not finish something about Nikolai Tesla. How do you mess that up? I don't know, but they did. I did not like it. I didn't like it at all. Nope. Mm -mm. If you're going to do a documentary style, do a documentary style. If you're going to do a theatrical style, do a theatrical style. Why are you trying to like chop it all up and make it all crazy? Um, at one point they're throwing ice cream at each other and then they're all like, that's probably not how this really happened. Then why did you just waste that time that I could have been spent doing anything else? You wasted my time showing me something that would have been fantastic if it had really happened. But then you told me it didn't happen. I don't understand. Mm -mm. I haven't had so much time wasted since they did the mermaid documentary. That was really not a documentary. It was a joke. So just before I get into some of the more silly stuff, there's a couple of more theological things that, that I can list off. So I wanted to talk a little bit about like my favorite theologians, favorite pastors to listen to, favorite Puritans, things to that nature. So these are just some uh, names to throw out there. So if you guys need some, some different people to check out, this is going to be that moment. Um, obviously, I just mentioned the Patristic Fathers, early church fathers. As far as that goes, you've got like Justin Martyr. Martyr wasn't his last name. That just happens to be what he's famous for having having been martyred. Um, I mentioned Polycarp. Uh, there's Irenaeus and Clement of Rome. Their writings have somehow stayed through the test of time, and we still have them. My favorite of all of those different writings is Justin Martyr's uh, Apologetics. Uh, his his apology. It's a trilogy where he is defending the faith. I absolutely adored that. That was just really such a treat. But all of the Patristic Fathers, if, if I had to pick a favorite, I'm going to pick Polycarp because I've seen a movie about him. And so he feels more real. <laughs> if they would make a movie about Clement of Rome or Irenaeus, then I would feel like they were royal too. Um, Athanasius is another great one. He's not a Patristic Father, but he he was alive in the early, early times. Uh, obviously, there's the Athanasius against the world. It's a really, really great expression because... He was kicked out of the city a lot because he refused to bow to the popular theological errors of the day. So that, uh, that's a good one. Um, as far as Puritans go, you've got, um, of course, I've mentioned John, John Bunyan, David Brainerd. Uh, David Brainerd is a contemporary with Jonathan Edwards. They actually lived together for a while. Um, Jonathan Edwards, of course, is just a prolific writer. Like you're you're going to love everything that he writes. Uh, John, uh, Jonathan Owens, John Owens is um, a writer that actually, if you are bothered by old English, you, you might want to get used to John Bunyan and Jonathan Edwards first, because John Owens is on a whole nother level intellectually. And so he's, he's, his, sometimes his stuff can kind of go a little bit over my head. Thomas Watson, as I mentioned already before, um, as far as reformers go, there were other reformers besides Calvin and Martin Luther, like we already know. Uh, there was Ulrich Zwingli, of course, um, and there was there was a lot of people before that, like Tyndale and all that stuff. But I I have not read anything from anybody else besides Martin Luther and John Calvin, so I can't really say anything about those other guys. But as far as more current pastors go, obviously Charles Spurgeon is everybody's favorite, right? Like. Can, can we just say how what a blessing it is that we can still read his sermons? Such a neat thing. Um, Martin Lloyd Jones is a great a great pastor, really cool accent that you can listen to. Uh, Exposit the word over on YouTube. They are doing a really great job po um, posting those. 
And let's see here, obviously, Vody Bauckham, Paul Washer, John MacArthur, R.C. Sproul, and um, Stephen Lawson. Uh, boy, Dr. Lawson in his men's Bible study, just because we're ladies, he said he says it's okay. He says it's okay all the time for us to watch. So we can't go physically because it's physically for their guy group here, but like we can listen in and it's okay. It will be such a blessing to you. I love his uh, men's Bible study. And, and I think that's, that's like a good, a good solid list of names for you to check out. If you are uh, in need of some different people to check out uh, most of the newer names, you've probably already heard of, but hopefully at least some of those early patristic fathers, you guys will be blessed by um, none of them, regardless of what you hear or see online. None of the early patristic fathers were Roman Catholics because the Roman Catholic Church didn't exist yet back then. OK, when they used the word Catholic back then in the early church, it was with a lowercase c because the word itself just meant universal. When they use Catholic back then, they're just saying the universal church, not just my little church in this town. I'm talking about everybody. That's all that means. So that's that's just that's free. That's as an aside. So now just a few kind of silly things for 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 you guys because why not? Because you know it's been kind of a fun episode, but mostly theologically driven. Okay, so I'm going to go through some of these kind of quickly. Um, my favorite concerts that I've ever been to. I have not been to a lot of concerts. You guys know, I, I just mentioned several times why I have a hard time sitting still. And also because of the sensory overload of things like that, loud noises, stuff like that can, can really overwhelm me. The first concert I ever went to was a um, Hanson concert. And that's still my favorite concert that I've ever been to. I went to a um, Green Day concert whenever I was a preteen. Uh, can't even describe the amount of uh, smells that were going on in that crowd. So that was not my favorite experience. That that was definitely not my favorite experience. Um, and then I, I've been to a Big Daddy Weave concert before I was saved. So I don't really know where he's at theologically. That was a Baptist church that I was at, but I don't really know um, where he's at theologically. I should probably check on that. But uh, favorite sports teams. These are some of the cool things that my husband mentioned that he said I should put in here a little bit. And since he's my favorite person in the whole wide world, I'm going to do it. Um, favorite sports team is obviously going to be the Cowboys, even though... Oh, Dak, please. Come on. You got to stop asking for 40 million. What are you doing? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? You guys, we won by like one point the other day. We have so many fantastic players on that team. We should be blowing everybody else out of the water, but what are we doing? We're winning by one point. Really? Really? I don't care how many yards he rushed, but he had to, he had to rush that many yards because he literally was behind the game the whole two first quarters. Of course he had to rush for that much. I'm sorry. It's going to be okay. I just, I never enjoyed football until I met my husband and it's his fault that I like it so much now. Favorite store, favorite store that I like to shop at, Amazon. <laughs> Does that count? If it doesn't, it should. Um, yeah, Amazon, because then I don't have to go anywhere and, and I can just find everything um, on Amazon. And then I get a package in the mail. I love getting packages in the mail. Okay, favorite assignment. And I love this question. My, this is another one my sweet husband uh, mentioned. We travel, as you guys know, if you've watched this for very long, uh, we travel for my husband's work every 13 weeks, supposedly. Thir three months to six months is usually what an assignment would last. Some some assignments are eight weeks, but we've never, we've never taken one of those. So usually every three months, sometimes every six months, we would travel to a new assignment. It became impossible for us to leave Bismarck because it... It, there was a pandemic, but uh, usually, ordinarily, we would stay here in in Bismarck for like the spring and the summer, and then we would we would move on to the next place for the fall and the winter. But um, we've been to several different states. We we took some assignments in Texas and Oklahoma and Wyoming, Washington, obviously here in North Dakota, Idaho, and let's see where else have we been. I hope I'm not leaving any of that out. It's it's late and I'm sort of confused, but we've been to a lot of different cities. And so sometimes we go back to the same state, but without the, we, maybe we'll go to a different city, to a different hospital. So my favorite place that we've been so far, I would have to say is probably, 
a toss up between Rimmerton, Washington. That was the first place we went to. And then um, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. That, that was a tremendously beautiful place. But third, coming in third, a strong third would be when we, when we were in uh, Gillette, Wyoming, because Gillette, Wyoming is gorgeous. It's just beautiful there. And, and so those are three and those three are my favorite because they were so pretty. My least favorite was Houston. We're never going to go back to Houston. Mm -mm. Anytime we've been invited. No, because Houston is like, breathing through somebody's armpit that's what it feels like to be in houston like you are breathing in sweaty gross water filled air that shouldn't be as filled with water as it is but it's humid down there like no one's business and it was horrible and there are massive bugs okay i grew up in dallas texas i understand bugs there are those massive like huge cockroaches though i don't know what they're called but they are huge and they're really gross and creepy no thanks no, thanks for that one. I don't care how much money you offer. I'm not going back to Houston. So that's my least favorite. Those are my favorites. Let's see here. Favorite season or time of year is going to be a toss up between and see, and, and always it's going to depend who where we're at, because if I'm going to say favorite season, it's probably going to be winter because I love the, the snow, but I don't love the winter here in Bismarck because negative 30 shouldn't exist. And, and it does here. And that means that you can't play with the pretty snow. Pretty snow will make your fingers fall off. Don't touch the pretty snow. It just burns here. So I love winter anywhere else. I would love spring. I would adore spring, except for it comes with ridiculous amounts of allergies for us. And we once were in Lubbock, Texas for an assignment during spring. And there's a plant down there that I'm really, really allergic to. So every time I left the house, my eyes would burn like they were on fire. I couldn't wear makeup at all because it was, it was that bad. Like the, the just the pouring of tears every time I went to the store, it looked like I was crying and, and I had to like bring tissues and it would, my, my allergies are so bad that the, the tears that come out from the allergies burn and itch because I don't know, maybe they're filled with pollen that I'm allergic to. I have no idea, but the weirdest allergy just as a little cool aside that I've ever had, there is a tree or plant. I can't remember because it's been a few years here in Bismarck that in the spring, when it starts to pollinate, it's proteins are so similar. Maybe proteins isn't the exact word. It's been a few years. It's something about its molecular structure is so similar to bananas that if you are allergic to the pollen in the tree, eating a banana will also make that allergy worse. So Kaylee and I, all of a sudden, we were just eating our bananas like normal human beings and our tongues swelled and we'd never had that happen before. And, and, uh, and so, yeah, we learned that apparently in certain seasons and certain places, you can become allergic to fruit that you weren't allergic to before. So that was fun. <laughs> it's just, just a really weird random story uh, that maybe you guys have experienced. I don't know. Let me know. if you. <laughs> I had never heard of it before, before it happened to us. So this is going to be the last one. Okay. Last one. And then I'm, I'm done with this cool list. Hopefully it's something that you've enjoyed. My favorite kind of pizza. I feel like this is important because whenever I sent the message out about what the, the sweet ladies on my list would like to hear, I, I literally was responded with by somebody saying, why don't you talk about how much you like pineapple on your pizza? That's so cute. It's so cute, guys. How come you couldn't just let it go? If you're not watching and you're listening, I'm holding up my pineapple plus pizza equals heresy cup because that's what it is. But my favorite kind of pizza is actually five meat. So you got like your pepperoni and your bacon and your Italian sausage and your other two kinds that they put on there. That's my favorite. I love that. I'm definitely a big carnivore. So there you go. That's my favorite kind of, of pizza. And yeah, if you guys have other favorites that you wish that I had talked about, send them my way. And maybe next time I do an episode like this, I can cover those. And if you have other things that you wanted to tell me about that do not involve pineapple on pizza, then let me know because I might just put pineapple on pizza on the list of things that Clementine has to answer. So it's possible. It's possible that that can happen. And I'm just kidding. I love you guys. I love all of you wonderful pineapple addicted people. I'm praying for you. Your, your sinful taste buds eventually will be sanctified and it's going to be okay. There won't be pineapple pizza in heaven, guys. There's not going to be there. It's blasphemous and, and I'm praying for you. But anyways, thanks for listening to this, guys. If you have not already subscribed over on YouTube, you have to click the bell 
the little bell and tell it that you want to be notified. And that way you can actually see me go live. Um, I, I think there's some, some folks that have been missing the live event. And unfortunately, if you don't click the notification thingy, you, you won't know whenever I go live. So there you go. That's a little bit of information there. Don't forget to check out the other podcasts on this channel. Um, on Tuesdays, there will be a Quilla and Priscilla hour. They are taking a little break right now, but they will be back soon. And on Sundays, we have Breath of Life. That's Pastor Edward and uh, Sandy from the group. Also on Wednesdays, not every single Wednesday, but it will be happening on a Wednesday. We have Breath of Life with Brooke Bartz. And so that is the author of Chronic Love. Also, you guys, if you haven't already checked out Through the Narrow with Gina Cook and Tammy Dykes, they are doing a fantastic job. They write every other Tuesday on the blog and their stuff is just fantastic. And so uh, make sure that you check that out. I'll link to their recent articles below. So yeah, that's it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on Friday. God bless you, Humble Bees. Bye. Thanks for listening, Humble Bees. This is Tulips and Honey. Over now. I think that diamond still needs a little more polish. Yeah. <laughs>